reading from the Amplified uh, Version. In the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams which was troubled and disturbed his spirit which interfered his ability to sleep. Then the king gave a command to call all the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers, the Chaldeans, and tell the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king, and the king said unto them, I had a dream, and my spirit troubled and anxiety to know the context, the meaning of the dream. Then the Chaldeans said to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell the, tell the dream to your servants and we will declare an, inter an interpretation. And the king replied to the Chaldeans, my command is firm and unchangeable if you do not reveal the context, the dream, along with its interpretation, you shall be cut into pieces, and your houses be made a heap of rubbish. Ah, there was a there was a problem there, folks. And it's almost a parallel to what we're going through of these days. Ah, with us, us saints of God. We're in a parallel with Daniel is. He is under a rule of a mad king. And we have a mad president. But God. Oh hey! But God. He got us. Ah, I, I love this scripture. I love this word. And he gave them many. Let's go down script. Let's go down and scroll down to. So tell me the dream of the interpretation. They, and, they, and they answered. And they said, let the king tell his servants. And we will explain it. What I'm trying to say is a long text right here. The king was crazy because he had a dream that he couldn't even remember that's madness. And he want them to tell them the dream that he couldn't remember, that he don't even know what, what he's dreaming about, and they don't even know what he's dreaming. But that's the secrets. That's secrets that God have concerning to what's to come. Ah, if you turn with me down, Daniel had a conversation with one of the kings because after that the, the king said kill all the music kill all the ma magicians and the scholars and and uh, the sorcerers kill them all because they can't interpret a dream kill all the wise men of Babylon and Daniel being a wise man of Babylon was concerned for his life and for others. And thank God for wisdom. Thank God for wisdom, for the man of God who has wisdom. He asked the king's captain, Arioch, in discretion. Everybody say in discretion. Wisdom brings discretion, folks. And he spoke with the captain who was ordered by the king to kill all the wise men. What's the problem with the king? Why do you want to kill us all? What we do wrong? So the captain explained to him the situation. So discretionly, uh, here's that word discretion. He went before the king and he asked the king, give me time. Everybody say time. time. Oh my God. Don't we all need time for to the king? 
My God, we need time. Even though the mad king didn't even give him the dream that he couldn't even remember, he said, King, give me time. Don't we all need time? Oh, God, but thank the Lord. Thank God that we don't have to only answer to the king of this earth, but the king in heaven. He sought God. And by before then, he, he had companions to intercede with him. Hananiah, Ariz, uh, Mikael, and Azariah. Oh, they, they are known for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Pretty people pretty much know what that is. So he went before the king. And he said, King, we had a meeting. We had a prayer meeting. Me, me and the three of our brethren had a prayer. And we sought God. And thank God in heaven that he answered our prayer. So God gave him the secrets and the secrets of kingdom of heaven, the kingdom. And don't you know we have that secret too, folks? Oh, we have the secret of the kingdom of God. Oh, hallelujah. We got the secrets, saints. The king don't know what's going on. The president don't know what's going on. But let me tell you one of you. Saints, we have the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is in God, God in us. The presence of God in us. Hallelujah. And when, when Daniel magnified God, He gave God the glory. But after he, res after he showed the king the secrets, the king bowed down to him. Oh God, oh people of God, once we recognize the secrets of God, there will be a turning point in our lives. And I pray that every one of you realize there is a turning point of no return. And I want every one of y'all to be blessed by this word. God bless you and thank you. Amen. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. This is a man of God preached a turning point of no return. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hey, we come to ask some church, so go ahead and kick your shoes off and let the Lord have his way. We're going to now move back in our program, and we're going to come with praise and worship. Great open door praise team. Come on, clap your hands for him. Hallelujah. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. We came tonight to praise the lamb, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Come on, if you came to give him praise tonight, Come on, get ready to put your hands together. Come on, get ready to lift those hands. Lift your voice. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Come on and sing and shout praises unto him. We worship the lion of the tribe of Judah. We worship the one and only, the holy one of Israel. We give him glory. We give him honor. We give him praise. And we magnify his name tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. We magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Be lifted up tonight. Yeah, yeah. He's a lion of Judah. Lion of Judah. You are my Lord and King. You are my Lord and King. He's a lion of Judah. Lion of Judah. Reign over everything. Reign over everything. You're the lion of Judah. Lion of Judah. You are the great I am. You are the great I am. We lift your name to the heights tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, help me glorify him. You're the Lion of Judah. Lion of Judah. You are my Lord and King. You are my Lord and King. You're the Lion of Judah. Lion of Judah. Reign over everything. Reign over everything. Lion of Judah. Lion of Judah. You are the great I am. You are the great I am. Oh, 
Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. The Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. We magnify your name, Jesus. We sing holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy are you, Jesus. Holy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're a worshiper, come on and sing out of your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. You are the Lamb, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord, oh, God Almighty. Under the yes. That's your name, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it again. Say, Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you're the center of our worship. Our eyes are on you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy. 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 Yeah. Holy. Are you Lord? Are you Lord God? Almighty. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. 
Ashanda. Come on, lift those voices. Give me your praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're the center of our joy tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're the lily of the valley. You're the rose of Sharon, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. ourselves to you tonight, tonight, Lord Jesus. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. Lamb of God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together wander, go to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to worship you. Hallelujah, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I worship you for who you are. I worship you tonight, Jesus. I worship you. Hallelujah. 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 I worship for who? For who you are. For who you are tonight, Jesus. For who you are. For who you are. For who you are, for who you are, Lord, for who you are, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Give them another hand, give them another hand. Well. It's, it's about time this day come. Been waiting and waiting. I want to thank Dr. Harden for allowing us to have this service here. And I thank God for all of the ministers here. And we just want to know this is a blessed day to be living. So I want you guys to know. I hope you guys had a safe time coming here. And this is the welcome. I want you guys to feel welcome. Feel free to just let God go and let him have his way. Uh, can I have a response from anybody out there, you know? I know God been good to somebody out here because we alive.
to anybody else? And you guys, let go, let God have his way. Y'all having a good time? Shout hallelujah. Go oh, glory to God. It's all right to praise him. Hey, would you rest on your feet for me and help me welcome and appreciate jurisdiction number one ordination board led by Chairman Superintendent Wilbur McNair. Come on and give it up. Hallelujah. Thank God for these men of God that are showing these young men the way. At this time, we will have laudatory remarks from our chairman, Superintendent Wilbert McNair. God bless you. Thank you. Come on, give God some more praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. I admire the uh, praise team. Amen. You actually were praising the Lord and allowing the Lord to be recognized. Yes, you may be seated. Thank God for the privilege to be here tonight. I want to th honor the pastor. I want to say thank you for opening your doors and allowing us to come and uh, do what we do. We have the responsibility of making men ready to preach the gospel in First Jurisdiction Church of God in Christ. And we do not ordain the men. We just do our part in trying to get them ready to do a good job when the bishop calls on them. We have a large roster of men who are ordained elders that have come through this board. And it is from that roster that the bishop makes his choice of whomever he wants to, to whatever position he wants to put them in. And we want to, it's our job to try to do our best to present you before the bishop and to do a good job. Uh, we do not ordain, the bishop does that. And uh, we try, we have striven hard for the last uh, almost nine months working with these men, getting them ready to stand before the bishop and to stand before first jurisdiction. We do not take this lightly. It is a serious business. And uh, they have our prayers, they have our instructions. Uh, we have been around quite a while. And we know what Church of God in Christ is all about. And so that's what we do. We try to make you First Jurisdiction Church of God in Christ preaches. And I think we've done pretty good. And we've turned out some good preachers. And uh, it's, it's an honor for us when the bishop can call on whomever he wants to, to do whatever he wants them to do, and for him to feel good about what you've done. And uh, so we are workers for the jurisdiction, we're workers for the bishop, we're workers for each of you and all of first jurisdiction, but most of all, we're in this for God. Amen. We love what we're doing. Amen. I've been doing it now for almost 25 years, and um, uh, we all love what we're doing, and uh, we consider it a service for the church, for the bishop, for the, and of course for the Lord. And uh, we are praying for you, and we are encouraging you uh, to do a good job for the Lord. You men preach. I know we want to hear some preaching here tonight. Amen. Thank God again for uh, Pastor allowing us to be here. God bless you. Back into the hands of God bless you. Come on. Come on, let's say praise the Lord again for our chairman. And let's thank the whole board. These men are really pouring into us. We wouldn't be here without them helping us to do what God has called us to do. Can the board stand? Let me introduce the rest of them. We have Superintendent Wilbur, uh, 
Jones. We have Superintendent, uh, excuse me, Pastor Dennis McZeal, Superintendent Administrative Assistant Jeffrey Lewis, and Superintendent Dr. Craig Lowe. Say thank God for these men of God. Amen. Amen. They, they tough on us too. A tough on us. They want to make sure we get it right. At this time, we're going to hear from Great Open Door Choir with an A selection. Immediately following them, we're going to hear some more preaching, some more sermonettes. They're going to come in this order. Minister Spencer Davis, and following him will be Minister David Gates, and then I will be back before you.
Amen. Let's give that choir another hand praise. Come on, let's give the choir another hand praise. Can I see the hands of how many come to have some church on tonight? That wasn't everybody. Can I see the hands of everybody that come to have some church on tonight? I come to have some church on tonight. Amen. We thank God for all of you that are here on tonight. Let's give another hand praise to our ordination board here on tonight. Come on, y'all clap a real weak. Let's give our ordination board a hand praise on tonight. I'm scoping the audience. I'm looking for my wife. She's here somewhere. There she is. Amen. Let's give a hand praise for my wife. Amen. Amen. She's here. She's praying for me. My hero is here. My dad, my father, my pastor, he's here. Let's give Pastor Davis a hand praise on today. Man, I know everything's going to be all right when I see him around. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, revival is coming. Look at your other neighbor and say, revival is coming. Revival is coming. How many know we're living in dangerous times? A time where everything is happening all at the same time. Right now as we speak, right now, right now, this very moment, we have murders, raping of women, molestation of our children, racial injustices and all type of heinous crimes happening right now. The Apostle Paul mentions in the book of 1 Timothy, he talks about a people having a conscience seared with a hot iron. In the second epistle of Paul, Paul writes a letter to his friend Timothy, describing the times we will experience in the last days. Somebody shout last days. He describes his times as perilous, meaning difficult or dangerous. The characteristics Paul describes in this letter to Timothy speaks not only of corrupt time, but of corrupt people. Paul's view of perilous time wasn't the wars that are going on now. It wasn't the famines or the diseases in the land or the calamities that various that we may face. But his view of perilous times was in regard to the wicked and depraved ways of man. Tell somebody we're living in the last days. Paul had four reasons as to why he wrote that epistle in the book of 2 Timothy. One was to exhort Timothy in his ministry at Ephesus. Second, to warn Timothy of perilous times to come. To request his visitation to the prison before his demise. And four, and lastly, to instruct the church. I want us to focus our attention to the second reason he wrote this epistle. The warning of perilous time. Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. That's 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. Are y'all praying for me? Yes, 2 Timothy says it like this. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good. They'll be treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having the appearance, having the appearance of goodliness and godliness, but denying its power. The Bible says, avoid such people. For among them are those who creep in households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions always learning. Tell somebody always learning. And never able to arrive to the knowledge of the truth. Doesn't that sound like the times we're living in now? 
We've reached that time. Yes, we've reached that time, that time called perilous. Somebody say perilous times. However, however, even in the perilous times, there's still hope. There is still hope even in today's time with all of the murders and all of the rapes and all of the molestations. Tell somebody there's still hope. There is still time to recover. Tell somebody again, revival is coming. Say it like you believe it and say it like you need it. Say revival is coming. Although we will experience perilous times, God says, God says, we heard what Paul had to say. Can we hear what God has to say? God says in the last days, in the same days that times are going to be perilous, in the same last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit. He said, I will pour out my spirit in the last days. Paul reminds us on one hand that the last days we see will be perilous. Perilous. But God says on the other hand, tell somebody on the other hand, it shall come to pass that in the last days God will pour out his spirit. While we are in the midst of a perilous times, we will see the outpouring of God's spirit. Revival is coming. Revival in our home. Revival in our churches. Revival on our jobs. Revival in our families. Tell somebody, it shall come to pass. I declare on tonight, I got just a few more minutes. I declare on tonight that it shall come to pass. That our sons will be delivered. I declare tonight that our daughters will be saved. I declare tonight that revival will come and it will remain. Tell somebody it's going to come and remain. Revival, revival, revival is defined as an improvement in the condition or the strength of something. God is getting ready to improve our condition and strengthen us. He's getting ready to strengthen us and improve what we have left. Somebody shout revival. I come to tell you while we're in the midst of a perilous times, we will still see God's outpouring of his spirit. In the book of Acts, the second chapter in the 17th verse, it says, and it shall come to pass, and it's getting ready to happen. Tell somebody it's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. How many people are looking for it to happen? Come on, you too quiet. How many people really need for it to happen? The Bible said in Acts, the second chapter in the 17th verse, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy and I will show them wonders in heaven above and in signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapors of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord and the Bible says again and it shall come to pass how many looking for it to come to pass that whosoever that whosoever that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Somebody shout Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. The prophet Joel said the best. In Joel the second chapter in the 28th verse, and it shall come to pass. And he talks about all of this. But in the 32nd verse, that's what caught my attention. He said it again, and it shall come to pass. That whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Tell somebody, I'm looking for deliverance. Oh, y'all don't believe it. Tell somebody, I'm looking for deliverance. Tell somebody again, I'm looking for deliverance. The Bible says, in for, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as saith the Lord, and there shall be deliverance in the remnant. How many of the remnant of God we have in here tonight? How many are still of the remnant of God? How many people are still part of the remnant of God? Tell somebody there will be deliverance. 
Amen. That's the end of my time. Let's give the Lord another hand praise. Come on, let's give the Lord another hand praise. Come on, let's give God another hand praise. Come on, let's give God another hand praise. I don't want to just talk about it. I want to see evidence. I don't want to just keep talking about what's getting ready to happen. Tell somebody, I want to see evidence of it. I want to see the manifestation of it. I want to see the power of God moving amongst the people of God. I want to see healing. I want to see deliverance. I want to see breakthrough. I want to see manifestation. Come on, let's praise God on tonight. Wonderful word, wonderful word. Put your hands together for him again. It's a blessing to be here. It's a blessing to be here on a Friday night. You know, how many know when you wasn't saved, uh, you were somewhere else? First of all, I want to thank God for just this time, you know, and I want to thank God for my wife over there. Please stand, my wife. Thank God for her. Thank God for my pastor, which is my dad and my mom over here, my brother and my sister. It seems like my whole church is here. Uh, I thank God for everybody that just pressed their way to come out. Hope I won't disappoint you. Now it's time to get to work. Uh, you know, how many thank God for a second chance? How many thank God, you know, how many, how many understand that God bless you to come from where you were? How many, how many people know that God bless you from where you were? That we didn't, we wasn't always saved. We was like uh, sinners, you know? And if, the, if, you, if, no, if I can tell somebody, if you wasn't a sinner, then I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about somebody that's been delivered, that been, came back from down in the Dutch. Well, I'm, ta I'm talking about the prodigal son. And I'm talking about, it's called the lost son. When you turn your Bibles to St. Luke chapter 15, my theme is trust the process. You know, we can't worry about a lot of things that's going on. We have to trust God and put our faith in God totally. I'm trying to give you guys some time to get there, but I'm going to go on. You know, the first thing uh, about the prodigal son, I was trying to look at that and get an understanding. And to really understand that, process right there. I had to go back to the beginning of the uh, book, St. Luke 15. And Jesus was having dinner or sitting down with a group of folks that the Pharisees didn't agree with. They felt like uh, these are sinners. He was having dinner with the publicans and the sinners. And you must know that the publicans were the tax collectors and they wouldn't write. And we must understand that, you know, the Pharisees were self-righteous. And I really did a lot of studying on Pharisees, and I said, you know what? This is amazing, you know. I grew up in church all my life, my dad preaching. And, but when you're not paying attention, you don't hear it. But I tell you, when God calls your number, that stuff recalls back to your mind. You know, you know sometimes you hear, but sometimes you don't hear. But when it's your time, God will recall all that stuff into your mind that you thought you. So keep training up your children. Keep bringing them here because you never know when it's their time. You never know what God is going to do for them. And the people that don't bring their kids to church, let's just keep praying for them. But I hope you got it there by now. But, you know, these, this is a one-part parable out of three. The first one was a shepherd had a hundred sheep. And he lost one of them. Well, one of them went astray. And he came back, and he put them on his back, and he, and he celebrated. See, the Pharisees was upset that Jesus was talking to the sinners. And he said, Jesus received sinners. I want to let you know, we received sinners. Jesus received sinners. We all received sinners, right? Because we all were sinners at one time. Do we understand that? We all were sinners. I, I need somebody to understand what I'm saying, because if you wasn't a sinner, then, like I said, I'm not talking to you. But we all were sinners at one time. So they was upset that Jesus was dealing with them. But I, I look back at the other chapter, and Jesus went to the Pharisees, the chief of the Pharisees, and he was, there was a, a guy that had dropsy. And all of a sudden, he just came and said, is it lawful? Can I pray for this guy on the Sabbath day? And these people are self-righteous. They didn't say anything. They didn't say not a mumbling word. But so as long as I can pray for your people and you, it's okay. But no, we got somebody over here, the unsaved, you can't. So we, we thank God we don't have to deal with that type of lifestyle. We thank God we don't have to deal with that lifestyle. Thank God Jesus came for all of us. White, black, Chinese, it doesn't matter. So he said, all souls is mine. Also, the soul of the father, the soul of the son, but the soul that's sinning. Thank God that covers everybody. I'm going to keep going. The son, he said, give me my portion. Give me my inheritance. He wanted his things. But 
The father wasn't even dead. Most times you get your inheritance when the, uh, your father passed away. But you got to know this son was kind of disrespectful, not kind of disrespectful to ask for something that really wasn't his yet. But he couldn't wait for his father to die. But guess what? The father gave it to him anyway. But I know some of you guys, if your, if your child asks for your, some money, his inheritance while you're living, you probably tell him to kick rocks or something like that. Tell him to get out of here. But the Lord, he gave it to him because he knew he was going to spend it all. And then he went off into a far country. And I want to tell you, a far country is not really out here in Russia, China, whatever. Far countries, anytime you get away from God. When you leave the presence of God, it can be out this door in Victoria. It's whatever you leave. You leave the cover and the protection of God. That means, so if you're not saved, you are in a far country. Just to let you know. If you're not saved, you are in a far country. Just to let you know. So that you don't have to worry about anything. So, of course... He let him go out there. He spent all he had, and it was a famine. And it wasn't just a famine. The Bible said it was a mighty famine. You know, I looked and I looked, and this was the only time they said it was a mighty famine right here. But God caused this famine. God caused this right here. Then he began to be in want. And then when he began to be in want, he ended up joining himself to a citizen. Then he ended up being in the pig pen. I don't know if I'm talking to anybody, but have anybody been in the pig pen? Because the pig pen represents sin. It represents something that's nasty, something that's a place you don't want to be, and it represents something that's just disgusting. And it's actually going to cause some action. It's caused you to want to get out. It's like, you know, I don't know if you've ever been delivered from a, a prostitute house or a crack house or anything like that. That's what it is, a place that you have to get out of there and that God, you know, so, but I thank God for the training because Proverbs 22 and 6 says, train up a child the way he should go. And when he gets old, he will not depart. We got to understand our children don't want to grow up in church. They don't want to come to church. We don't ask them to go to school, so don't ask them if they want to go to church. I don't understand this type of generation where they asking them if they want to go to uh, church, but they don't ask them if they want to go to school. This is about your soul, you know. Hey, they don't have you don't have that choice. You just when my dad would say, if you get when you see me get my coat, you get yours. It's no discussion, you know. It's no debating. It's no nothing. It's like we're going here. I don't even know why we're having this discussion in this day where we got to plead with our kids to go to church. That's insane. But I thank God. Is that uh, you know, uh, once this guy, once he lost what he had, he realized who he was. Sometimes God has to take everything from you for you to understand who he really is. Now, he will bless you if you got your money. He don't have to take it from you, but sometimes he got to take some people to the potter's house. He got to take and remake you. He got to take you somewhere where that everything is lost. My marriage is gone. My car is gone. My job is gone. And I'm down on my, and he'll take everything. If that's what it takes, he would do it. And some of us hard-headed is going to take that. Some of us, like I, it's going to take some of that. Some of us don't listen. Some of us have to bang our heads against the wall a couple of times. You know, the, the phrase I got for trust the process, I don't know if you know, there's a basketball player from the 76ers. And when he started, his name is Joel Embiid. You know, he started, his first two years, he started, and he didn't even play because he has surgery on his foot. But I looked at that, and now he's doing well. So when I came up with this, I said, trust the process. When he said, train up your child, you know, you just got to trust the process. You can't worry about anything. You got to just keep your hope on God. If you leave your kids alone and worry about God's business, he's going to bless your child. Because this thing is bigger than just our kids. You know, when you worry about God's business, he will worry about your business. That, that's how I look at it. I, I did it, and I tried it, and my daughter's over there, and I thank God. It works. It works if you just keep trying. He turned around and said, this is where I know he had true repentance. And we got to understand, the church got to understand about true repentance. True repentance means you, there's a change coming. It's not like that jailhouse repentance where you tell somebody, you're going to pray for him, you help him out, and you say he's coming to church. And when he get out of jail, you don't see him. You never see him at all. You never see him. Not, not that type of stuff. That's not true repentance. True repentance means something. He said, Father has sinned against heaven and thee. That already let me know he knew he was wrong. He already knew he was wrong. He said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and thee. You know, I'm no more worthy to be called your son. Make me a hired servant. That's what he said. That's like the rehearse. He just rehearsed that. But then when he, see, he came to his father, and his father seen him before he seen him. That's amazing. So whenever you leave the Lord, the father is always watching you. He don't take. Just because you left him, that don't mean he left you. He's standing right here waiting. The difference is between the sheep and the lady with the coin is that they have to go find them. Now with the son, now he... He waiting for you to come back because God is not going to come looking for you because he already know who you are. 
You left him, you're going to have to come back because he know the way right here. I just wanted you to know when he came to the father, he rehearsed it. He said, Father, I've sinned against thee. I'm no more worthy of your son. He didn't even get, he didn't even let them get that out, that make me your higher servant. He didn't let him get that out. When he came to him, he just came up to him, hugged him and kissed him. You know, he, he knew his father because the boy left. He left saying, give me my stuff. Give me my crown. Give me my, whatever you owe me, God. I want it and I'm out and I'm tired of going to church or whatever. But then he came back and said, make me a new man. Make me a good deacon. Make me a good pastor. Make me a better man. Make me something I can be worthy to be praised. Make me something I can just be faithful to my wife. Make me something I can be faithful to the ministry. Make me something where the, they don't have to force me to come to church. They don't have to force me to pay my tithe. They don't have to force me to do anything. Make me something, that a changed man. Renew my heart. Renew my mind. Renew everything inside of me. Make me something that I can be used for in your kingdom. Lord, help me. Make me something that you can be used. Now listen, the father puts a robe on him. The father puts some robes on him and cover him up. And I want you guys to understand this. When the father puts a robe on him, he covered him up. I said the father puts a robe on him and he covered him up because before he goes inside, I said the father puts a robe on him. Basically, the Lord covered the man up because before he gets inside, he knows some people that can't handle what you've been through. Some people, if you tell them that you've just been on the street, you tell them you've been doing drugs for 15 years, you tell them you've been prostituting for 15 or 13 years, you tell them you just got off the whole house or whatever it is, people in the church can't handle that. So as long as you clear it up with God, that is okay. You don't have to tell everybody what you've been through. As long as you clear it up with the Father, that's okay. Just make your connection with God, and that's all you need. You don't have to worry about anything else. You just keep on, keep on. As long as it's true repentance, God knows when it's true repentance. He know when it's true. The father knew when it's true repentance. So when he came to him, he kissed him and fell on him and he was glad to see him. So I wanted to let you know, is there anybody here that was out there in the pig pen and God blessed him to come on back over here? Is anybody that was out there? Anybody been locked up in jail? In, on the gangs? Anybody has been out there that God will bless you? God will bless you. God will bless you. You know, I want to let you know. The father wanted to celebrate. The father wanted to celebrate. And the older son was upset right? and I, I had to understand the characters of these people the father is our father which is in heaven the younger son is the Pharisees and no the older son is the Pharisees and the younger son I was trying to figure out who played that and I looked around. When you look to the left and to the right, we all play the part of the younger son because we all have wandered away and went astray. We all have left the Lord at one time. So we better thank God that God is merciful. I'm ending right now. I'm ending right now. Continue to just pray for those that are out there lost and don't judge them. Don't judge them. Just Let's just pray that they come in. Amen. What a word. What some preachers. Trust the process. Then we heard about revival time. Oh, bless his name. Hey, listen, I want y'all to do one favor for me because this is home. This is a great open door. Would you rest on your feet and help me appreciate the regional superintendent, the angel of this house, Dr. Garen Harden. Help me thank Great Open Door Worldwide Ministries. Oh, bless his name. What a great man of God. One of the best preachers in L.A. County. No, they didn't put that in the program, but I know better. This is my home. I got to do that. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Now, my last official act as your moderator, I'm your first moderator. There will be another moderator coming after me. And my last official act would be to introduce none other than uh, uh, Pastor Dennis Maxiel will lead us in worship and giving. God bless you. Come on, let's put our hands together. Give the Lord a praise. Come on, do I have any praisers out there? Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord some praise in this place. David said, I'll bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Then I like it says, oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, I need some praisers in this place. Come on, I need some praisers. Do I have any praisers in this place? Come on, don't get scared. Come on, don't, don't, don't get bougie on me. Come on, let's praise him. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. He woke you up this morning. Started you on your way. 
give you the activities of your limbs. Oh, somebody ought to bless the Lord. Come on, give him praise. Don't worry about that neighbor. Come on, if they get scared, tell them to move. Get in the back. Go somewhere, because I come to bless the Lord. I come to give him praise. I come to give him glory. I come to worship him. He's been too good. He's been too good. Come on, this is a praise break. Come on, about 45 seconds. Let's give the Lord the best praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, he's healed somebody's body. He's opened doors for you. Made ways out of no way. He deserves a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Protected you from the storm. Hallelujah. Ah, I love the Lord. You may be seated. I, I just felt that down on the inside. Y'all don't mind? Uh, just, just something on the inside. L little song says, Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Y'all know that? Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Joy bells. Joy bells. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Come on, everybody help me say it. Joy bells. Joy bells. Joy bells. Joy bells. Your bell keeps ringing in my soul. Somebody say, Yes, Lord, keeps ringing in my soul. Yes, Lord, keeps ringing in my soul. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, keeps ringing in my soul. And then the mother will say, Thank you, Jesus, keeps ringing in my soul. Thank you, Jesus, keep ringing in my soul. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, keep ringing in my soul. All right. I, I'm, a, I'm a praiser. Amen. When I wake up, I'm praising. Amen. When I go to bed, I'm praising. Amen. Because God's been good to me. I say, God's been good to me. Look, I don't look like what I've been through. Ah, let me say that again. I don't look like what I've been through. And look at your neighbor and tell them, say, I don't look like what I've been through. If you knew what I've been through, you praise the Lord for me. Come on, somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. God is good. Again, we cannot thank the shepherd of this house enough. Thank God for him opening doors for us. Amen. Dr. Garen Harden. Amen. We appreciate him so very, very much. And we want to be a blessing. Amen. To the ordination board and to this house. Amen. It's time to give. Amen. You can worship or you cannot worship without giving. Amen. The Someone said, every time you come to the house of the Lord, you need to come prepared to give. Amen. It's a blessing. Somebody just lift your hand up. Lift, it, lift your hand up. Lift the hand. Lift, 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 lift. God just blessed you. God, it's a blessing to lift up. Oh, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Amen. I, I say it, but I thank God, amen. I, I say it a lot, amen. But uh, last year, May, May 16th, amen, 2017, I suffered a stroke. Amen. But I can lift my hands. Hallelujah. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. When I lift up my hands, say, Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. I, I can tie my own shoes. I can put on my own pants. Oh, listen. And, and you think I'm not going to bless the Lord? He's worthy of it all. I said he's worthy of it all. He's worth. I, oh, I, 
I, I, let me move on because I, 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 amen. He's trying to take my shout out. But I can still shout. Oh, yeah. Y'all don't know. Just, just a scripture I want to read before we give because faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. And sometimes we need to hear the word of God to we can respond to God's word. God blesses the giver. He blesses the cheerful giver. The word of the Lord in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Turn your neighbor and say, what kind of blessing do you want? Your giving is predicated on the blessings that you receive. When you give bountifully, God will give back to you. How many of you know you can now give God? The Bible says, give and it shall be given, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. He says, verse 7, every man according to as he purposed in his heart, so let him and her give. Watch this, not grudgingly. Amen. We didn't come to, to prime you, to pump you. Amen. We just ask you to give. And God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Not grudgingly out of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God, I love this here. He says, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always, when? Oh, y'all talk back to me. When? Always. always. Having all sufficiency in what? All things. Amen. Somebody knows the book. Amen. Abound to every good work. When you give, amen, you just open up the door for a blessing. Amen. And God says if you give, he'll give back to you. Amen. He says, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you won't have room to receive. How many of you are ready to give on tonight? Come on, if you really make some noise in this place, if you're ready to give, we're going to give. Amen. I'm asking that everyone here, if you can, to give the very best gift you can. Try to give no less than $20 on the offering tonight. Amen. We want to be a blessing to the house here. We want to be a blessing to the Lord Nation Board. Amen. It costs. I live in Fontana, California. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I had to drive all the way out here. Amen. And so, amen. You might help me get put a little gas in that gas tank. Amen. To get back home. Yeah, somebody got it. Amen. Come on, everybody standing to your feet. We're going to come and we're going to give. And when you come, when you come, when you come, put a smile on your face. Put a smile on your face. And get, again, as close to that $20 as you possibly can. If not, you can give more if you like. But get as close to $20 as possible. Amen. These, these brethren are doing an outstanding, outstanding job. Amen. Amen. They're doing trust in the process. Amen. Revival is coming. Amen. Get ready to interpret the dreams of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank and we praise you for your goodness and your kindness. Father, you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. And everything that we have belongs to you. You have blessed us with jobs, with income, Father. Father, even the money that we find on the street, you provided it for us. Now, as we come, we come to give back to you cheerfully that which you have blessed us with. And, Father, I pray that you would multiply the gift. Bless a hundredfold in the name of Jesus is my prayer. Thank God. Amen and amen. I'm not sure how you come, but let's, you're in the hands of the ushers. Look at the ushers and they'll direct you. is your name all of my life I've never known you to fail you remain the same and wonderful is your name Joy in my day. I'm glad you're not. 
Bless you, may the Lord bless your giving. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Hey, aren't we having a wonderful time? Don't be sad because we just collect the offering. None. Just keep praising. God will bless you to have some more. Uh, so we're going to, the next up is the musical selection from Greater Open Door. How many know we serve an awesome God? Amen. Amen. We thank God for this occasion on tonight. Amen. For these men of God. Amen. Accepting their calling and stepping up. Amen. Because he is an awesome God and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Yes. Amen. I, we're going to come to you with my God is awesome. Amen. Amen. My God is an awesome God. He reigns yes. from heaven above. With wisdom, power, and love, my God is an awesome God. My God yes, yes. is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. My God is an awesome God. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. He can move he mountains. He can move mountains. Keep me in the Keep valley. Keep me in the valley. Hide me. Hide from me the rain. from the rain. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. He'll he heals me when I'm broken. When I'm broken. Give strength where I am weak. Forever he will reign. My God. My God is awesome. Hey, come on, somebody here. Awesome. My God. Awesome. Awesome. My God. My God. He is awesome. Awesome, my God, He's awesome. My God, He's the Savior of the whole world. He's the gift of salvation. By His stripes, I am healed. My God, my God is awesome. Today, I'm forgiven. Only because his of his grace, his I'm still living. Hey, glory to God. Praise his holy name. name. Hallelujah. Yeah. My God. My God is awesome. He's awesome. My God, he is awesome. Awesome. My God. My God is awesome. Come on, somebody tell me. He's awesome. Say it with me, y'all. He's awesome. Awesome. He's holy. 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 Awesome. Awesome. My God, my God, so awesome. He's great. 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 He's awesome. Awesome. My God. My God. So awesome. He's mighty. 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 He's awesome. Awesome. My God. My God. So awesome. He's great, he's great, he's great, he's great, 
He's great. He's great. He's great. He's great. He's great. He's awesome. Awesome. My God. My God. So awesome. Protector. 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 He's awesome. Awesome. My God. My God. So awesome. Provider, 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 provider. Has he ever done anything for you? Awesome, my God, so awesome. He's holy, 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 he's awesome. Awesome, my God, my God, so awesome. My God. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Hide me from the rain. My God. My God is awesome. My God so awesome. Heals me he heals when me I'm when I'm broken. broken. Gives me strength, strength where, I've where I have been weak. Forever, forever. He will reign. Hallelujah. My God is awesome. Hallelujah. Thank you. What a blessing. My God is awesome. What a blessing. What a thank you. Thank you very much. My God is awesome. That's a true, true statement. We're going to continue with our program. With the next minister, Minister Brandon Jones, and after him, Minister Barry Hankins to wrap it up. Give these guys a hand, praise. The house has been addressed on tonight, uh, but we certainly give honor to God, uh, who's the head of my life. We honor chairman and to the board. I honor my wife in her absence. She's at work tonight. I honor my family who is here. And I want to thank God and praise God for everybody. And my brothers is in the house. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's clap our hands. Quickly, I'm going to uh, Romans 8, 35 through 39. Going to the word of the Lord. My Bible reads a little different, uh, but we're going to go ahead and roll. Uh, 35 reads, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake, we are being put to death all the day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things, we are overwhelmingly conquered through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. May the Lord a blessing to the hear readers and doers of his word. Quickly on tonight, I'm just going to speak from the subject, more than a conqueror. All right, this evening I come to encourage you as a true believer of Jesus Christ. I come to encourage somebody who's feel weak on today, down and out, like you are ready to throw in the towel. You come to church regularly and you do your very best to apply the word of God to your life, but it seems as if you don't ever get a chance to see victory. Every time you think you've taken a step in the right direction, the conclusion is far left. You have given God all that you have, but it seems like God is withholding your blessings. But I slipped in on tonight to remind somebody that you are more than a conqueror. Somebody may be wondering what makes you more than a conqueror. You, my brother and sister, number one, belong to God. I don't care about where you've been or what you used to be. Doesn't matter what you have done in your past. You are a child of the true and living God. He is our heavenly father. He is our ultimate ruler. And because of it, you and I can stand here today and boldly declare we are more than conquerors. We serve the God who is king of all kings. We serve the Lord who is the Lord above all lords. I know our ethnic roots. Uh, go back to th this way and that way. Uh, some 
some from South America, some from the motherland. Uh, but when we accepted Jesus Christ uh, as our personal Savior, our spiritual roots connected us to the promised land. Uh, the songwriter said it like this, for every promise in the book is mine. Uh, the old saints of Zion would break it down and say every chapter, every verse, uh, and every line. Uh, you are more than a conqueror. Uh, let me tell you another reason why, because we have benefits. When a parent gets a new job, they enlist their children as dependents so they can reap the same qualifying benefits. Just because you are a child of God, you have the benefits of grace and mercy. I hear Lamentations 321 through 23. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies. We are not consumed for his compassion fails not. They are new every morning. Uh, great is uh, the Lord's faithfulness. Uh, we may have jacked up, uh, may have stumbled, uh, or even have fallen, but thank God for his grace, and thank God for his mercies. Uh, thank God for another chance, uh, another chance to tell him yes. Uh, we can say yes in the morning. Uh, we can say yes in the noonday. Uh, we can say yes in the evening. Uh, yes to his will. Uh, yes to his ways, uh, even when they are not our ways. Uh, thank God for the benefits. Uh, so when I need a little bit of grace, uh, when I need a little bit of mercy, uh, I can approach the throne of grace uh, and say, here I am, Lord, uh, standing in the need of prayer. Uh, you ought to thank God uh, for the gift of repentance uh, that literally positions us uh, to be more than conquerors. Uh, you are uh, more than a conqueror. Uh, just because of who he is uh, and because he is, uh, so are you. You. Uh, Jeremiah 1 and 5 declares, uh, before I was formed in the belly, uh, I knew thee, uh, I sanctify thee, uh, and I ordain thee, uh, a prophet to the nations. Uh, you're not a conqueror uh, because you are high and mighty. Uh, can't no money uh, pay to be this conqueror. Uh, 1 Peter 2 and 9 says, uh, but ye are a chosen generation, uh, a royal priesthood, uh, a holy nation, uh, and a peculiar people. Uh, that to show forth uh, the praises of him uh, that have called you out of darkness uh, into his marvelous light. Uh, somebody was called out uh, from being a liar. Uh, somebody was called out uh, from being a fornicator. Uh, somebody was called out uh, from being prideful. Uh, no matter what, uh, we have all been called out of something. Uh, I know many in the church uh, feel like we got it all together. Uh, like every I is dotted uh, and every T is crossed. But if you haven't been called out, it's because you're still in it. But I hear 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 says, Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. For when you're clean, you don't want to be dirty. Some of us have never been clean. We like being dirty. But you can't be saved and be dirty. You can't be holy and be unclean. Come your hands right there. Well, he said, be ye holy, for I am holy. You should want to be holy, because it's what God requires. You should want to be holy, because it qualifies you to be more than a conqueror. For I hear 1 John 4 and 4, it says, greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. You are more than a conqueror, because Psalm 34 and 19 declares, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, but the Lord, he delivers them out of them all, and we know that all things work together for the good of them who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. It's just like Big Mama's cooking, even though you may not like a certain ingredient, by yourself, uh, when you mix it in the pot, uh, when you begin to stir it a little bit, uh, it'll bless your soul. Uh, I just stop by to encourage somebody uh, to know that everything uh, is going to be all right. Uh, Bishop G. Patterson said like this, uh, he may not come uh, when you want him, uh, but he's always, uh, he's always on time. Uh, this is why uh, we must stay with God. Uh, don't you dare give up. Uh, don't you dare give in. Uh, don't 
to death throwing a towel, but stay with God. Thank you, Bishop Blake. I can see you. I can see me. I can see us in the future. And we look much better than we do right now. Messed up in the past, but more than a conqueror. May not have it all together, but more than a conqueror. Made some mistakes, but more than a conqueror. May hit some trouble, but I'm more, more than a conqueror. Thank you, Paul. I can, I can, we can, you can. We can do all things through Christ that strengthened us. I can hear Isaiah say, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It may hurt, but it won't prosper. It may sting, but it won't prosper. May be confusing, but it won't prosper. May look bad, but it won't prosper. For we walk by faith and not by sight. So I can look to the hills from which comes my help. All my help, all my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and made earth. I can look to the King, the King of glory. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong he's mighty the Lord mighty in battle lift up your hands 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 go ye gates and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is the king of glory he's the Lord of hosts he is the king of glory and his name is Jesus. Jesus, the lily of the valley. Jesus, the bright and morning star. Jesus, he's my keeper. He's my shelter. He's my redeemer. He's my savior. I give him glory. I give him praise because he's been too good. He's been too faithful. Clap your hands and give God praise. Go ahead on, go ahead on. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm following a real preacher, y'all. That's a real preacher right there. Hallelujah. That's a preacher right there. Go ahead on. Give God the glory. That's what we're here for. They have some church. Hallelujah. Well, 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 it's all right. Hallelujah. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. We more than a conquerors. Go oh, glory to God. I know better than to let God have his own way. Well, you better hurry up. You got three more seconds. Get your praise in now. Yeah, if you want to dance on a Friday night, it's right now. Go ahead. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm at least 20 years old in that young man. I'm glad he went on. Y'all had y'all chance to dance. <laughs> praise God. Listen, would you read? My, I would like, my mother's here with me tonight. I'm going to tell her age, 89-year-old mother, loving God, speaking in tongues. Would you stand in my older sister? If it wasn't no her, it wouldn't be no me. Come on and help me praise this woman. She in there praising God. If an 89 year old woman can praise God, what look like oh, you ought to be able to do something? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right, let me move. I'm going to go ahead and do what I'm assigned to do here. Uh, the house has been addressed. Praise God. I'm coming from St. John, the 15th chapter, 13 through 15. I don't have time to wait for you, so just catch up to me. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. 
Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I, I call you friends, and I have told you everything that I've heard of my Father unto you. I've made it known unto you. My subject on tonight is what a friend we have in Jesus. Come on and look at your neighbor and say, what a friend we have in Jesus. Now, the background of this chapter starts with the, uh, uh, the last thing Jesus said in 14 and 30. He said, arise and let us go from here. Uh -huh. And at this point, Judas of Iscariot is not with them, according to John 13 and 30. Having received a piece of bread, he then went out immediately. After that, Jesus and the disciples left the upper room walking towards Gethsemane. And they possibly seen a vineyard which reminded Jesus of this Old uh, Testament imagery, the vineyard. Uh, you can find read about that in Psalms 80 and uh, 8 through 16 and Isaiah 27 through uh, 20, uh, 27, 2 through 3. But Jesus applied an Old Testament imagery in a new way. Uh-huh, yes he did. He, he applied the new, t uh, the new image in this manner where he was saying that uh, he went out, he was saying in this image that he uh, was the true vine, uh-huh, which will yield a faithful harvest, Christ himself. Somebody say amen. Furthermore, our intimate connection with Jesus makes us more than servants. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his master or his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends, for all things that I've heard of my father I've made known unto you. The term friend here in the Greek is philos, meaning to wish him well, with a, based in an agape love or a brotherly love. Uh huh. Uh, 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 simply people sharing the same social status. Amen, somebody. Uh, we are friends of Christ in the sense that we are privileged to know his thinking. But I have called you friends for all things that I've heard of my father I have made known unto you. Saints, somehow we have slipped and used the term loosely much like the world. We have a false understanding of friendship. Mm, friendship is expensive. Friends will always give you unpredictable vulnerability. Mm. Even though relationships are our greatest resource. Relationships is what feed us. Uh huh. And then you have to watch those friends that you are feeding, but they are not feeding you. Oh, come on, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm going somewhere here. Uh, 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 friends are our greatest resource. All right. Then I, my, in my own life, uh huh. I had to learn the difference between a fan and a friend. I've had it mixed up most of my life. My daddy always told me, boy, you ain't got no friends. That's a fan. Uh, a fan when I got something. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. I want to preach this thing here. Uh, I want somebody to leave something, chewing on something. Amen, somebody. Uh, uh, gee, uh, just because, and what, what really happens is, uh, we call people our friends who are really not our friends. We do that because it is politically correct to do so. Uh-oh, getting quiet up in here. That's when I know I'm saying something. Uh, 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 we have all kinds of friends in our lives. We got funny friends. You know the ones, the ones that tell all the jokes and got a whole bunch of punchlines. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm talking about the type of friends we got right now. Uh, 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 then, then we have uh, disappearing friends. You can't find them when you need them. Oh, somebody know what I'm talking about. Ah, oh, God, help me here for a minute. Uh, then we have intelligent friends. They know something about everything. And even if you make up something, they know something about that. Oh, my God. Am I talking to anybody in here? Anybody got them kind of friends? Then, then, then we got some broke friends. They've always been broke ever since you've known them. When you see them coming, you already know. My God. Then, then, then we got some late friends. Guaranteed to be late at every single event. Oh, yes, I'm talking to somebody. Then, then we have some fair weathered friends. These friends will support you when it's convenient for them to do so. 
uh, usually when they don't have nothing else to do. Oh, come on, somebody help me here for a minute. Uh, then, then we got what we call the BFF friend. Uh, best friend for life they support you when it is convenient for them uh, they, they support you and they don't judge you that's the BFF friend but what I want to talk about on tonight uh, I want to talk about the BFFE friend Jesus Christ the best friend for everlasting life somebody shout glory hallelujah for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have have everlasting life he's an everlasting friend yes he is oh bless his name glory to God hallelujah uh, what a friend we have in Jesus uh, saints we need Jesus as a friend why do we need Jesus as a friend I'm glad that you asked the question because he bears all of our sins and our griefs yes he does who his own self bears our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin shall live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye are healed uh, let me say this here but when Christ we have we have an example to follow uh, when we talking about friends we got an example to follow remember that he fed the 5,000 and he laid his hands on the 70 and then he, did, he talked to 12 but he only let three in the garden uh, three in the garden of the uh, out of 5,000 he only had three friends and they went to sleep on him yes they did uh, oh we're talking about what a friend we have in Jesus oh bless his name uh, what, but I often hear I often hear the vernacular this is my BFF and my ride or die and I stopped by to let you know tonight uh, I don't have any friends that would die for me but what I found out is your BFF and your ride or die they will ride with you but they won't die for you oh come on somebody I only know one that died for me oh bless his name Jesus said greater love hath no man than this than for a man to lay down his life for his friends he's the only one he qualifies as a BFF he oh yes he does hallelujah glory to God but Lord we need Jesus as a friend because we have the privilege of carrying everything to him in prayer oh bless his name hallelujah now I know I'm the only one that I got some friends that I can only tell certain things to and then I have to tell other things to other things but with Jesus I can carry everything to him in prayer be careful for nothing but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God anybody hear what I'm saying in here you can carry everything to God in prayer oh bless his name uh, turning God turning to God in prayer brings serenity casting all your cares upon him for he careth for you oh bless his name we need Jesus as a friend because he's a faithful friend somebody say he's a faithful friend a man that has friends must first show himself friendly but there he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother Jesus is that friend that sticks closer than a brother oh bless his name hallelujah thank you Jesus uh, but what I realize relationships are very important and they don't happen without some effort on your part somebody say it requires some effort what I know in my own life what you don't nurture will die ah oh, God you have something to do and uh, if we confess our sins to Christ he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins the word faithful here in the Greek mean pistos meaning the execution of commands or the discharge of official duties somebody say God always does his part what a BFF he is what a best friend for everlasting life he is when we confess our sins we're saying we need a faithful friend in Jesus uh, we also are acknowledging his death for our friends amen somebody uh, what a friend we have in Jesus uh, there's none like him what a friend we have in Jesus can we find a friend so faithful oh 
oh God. I said, the Lord has been faithful. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. The Lord has been faithful. The Lord has been faithful. We can't find a friend so faithful. I'm getting ready to move across the field. The country folks know what I'm talking about. But I want to let you know something. There's nothing like Jesus as a BFF friend. He's our best friend for everlasting life, somebody. He's our friend on this side. And he's our friend over here. Oh, yes, he is. He said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Oh, bless his name. Then he said on this side, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back again and receive you to myself. And where I am, you may be also. Can we find a friend so faithful? What a friend we have in Jesus. There's none like him. Oh, bless his name. He's not a disappearing friend that I talked about. He said, Lo, I'm with you always. Hallelujah. When your bank account is high or when it's low, he's right there. Oh, bless his name. What a friend we have in Jesus. Come on, let's give God some praise in this house, everybody. Come on, will somebody put your hands together? Give God a great big praise.